When we lift weights, the load that we use can be either stable, moderately stable, or unstable. When we squat, we can use a Smith machine, which is very stable. We can use a barbell, which is moderately stable. We can use a barbell with some of the weights dangling from either end of the bar, and that's quite unstable. Similarly, when we bench press, we can use a Smith machine, which is very stable. We can use a barbell, which is moderately stable. We can use dumbbells, which is slightly less stable. And we can use dumbbells and use a Swiss ball as the bench, which is very unstable. We can alter the amount of stability in an exercise by changing the link between us and the weight, or between us and the ground. So in the bench press, when we make the exercise less stable by using dumbbells instead of a barbell, we're changing the link between us and the weight. We're making the, the weight harder to control. Um, but if we replace the bench with a Swiss ball, we're changing the link between us and the ground, and we're making ourselves harder to support while we perform the exercise. And these are just two different ways of altering the amount of stability that exists in any given lifting movement. Stability affects how much weight we can lift. When we perform an exercise under very stable conditions, we can lift more weight than if we perform the same exercise under less stable conditions. So when we perform a barbell bench press, we can lift more weight than in a dumbbell bench press. And if we do that same dumbbell bench press while resting on a Swiss ball instead of on a bench, then we lift even less weight. The main reason why we can lift heavier loads when the setup is more stable is probably because there is a reduced level of antagonist muscle activation. So when we perform an exercise with an unstable setup, we tend to find that our antagonist muscles, the ones that resist our agonist muscles performing the movement, are more active than in the stable equivalent. So for example, in the bench press, um, when we perform the bench press with an unstable load, we tend to find that the biceps, which resist the action of the triceps, um, biceps activation is higher. Um, than when we perform the same bench press with a, a more stable load. And this antagonist muscle activation um, resists the movement that we're trying to perform and essentially means that for any given level of agonist muscle force, the turning forces or torques of the joint are lower. After long-term strength training programs with unstable exercises, we find that the level of antagonist muscle activation decreases quite a lot and the activation of synergist muscles uh, increases. Um, and these synergist muscles don't interfere with the agonist muscle force in the same way that the antagonist muscles do. And this means that the amount of uh, joint torque that we can produce for the same level of agonist muscle force increases quite a lot because the antagonist muscles are no longer producing force that impedes that agonist muscle force from converting to a joint torque. So over time, this leads to quite large strength gains that don't actually involve substantial increases in agonist muscle force, because for the same level of agonist muscle force, we can produce a lot higher joint torque. For example, in the bench press, the biceps are very active when we use an unstable load. And this high level of biceps muscle force um, competes against the triceps muscle force that is being produced in order to lift the weight. So over a long-term strength training program involving a bench press with an unstable load, we would expect biceps muscle activation to reduce. And this would allow the same level of triceps muscle force to lift a heavier weight. So over long-term strength training programs, um, we can experience quite large gains in strength when tested with an unstable load, simply because the, um, the brakes come off. The antagonist muscles stop resisting the agonist muscles doing the job. On the other hand, when we do a strength training program involving very stable loads, such as um, in the Smith machine bench press, then the antagonist muscle activation was never very high to begin with. 
So there is not that uh, possibility to increase our strength by reducing the antagonist muscle forces that are competing against the agonist muscle forces. So biceps muscle activation would not be particularly high in a Smith machine bench press and therefore over a long term strength training program it wouldn't need to reduce very much. It wouldn't reduce very much at all. So um, that wouldn't be a possible way in which we could increase our Smith machine bench press um, maximum lift. And this is the essence of stability specific strength gains. When we use an unstable load in training, we can experience very large gains in strength that have nothing to do with the ability of the agonist muscles to produce force. We simply experience a reduction in the amount of antagonist muscle force and therefore strength increases by quite a lot. Um, when we use a stable exercise in strength training, we, have, we do not have this ability. We don't have the ability to reduce antagonist muscle forces by a large amount and thereby increase the amount of weight we can lift for the same agonist muscle force. We actually have to increase agonist muscle force in order to increase the weight. In practice, what this means is that when you're using an unstable load in training, whether that's a very unstable load like you're using a Swiss ball or some other uh, instability device, or whether you're simply using dumbbells, um, the amount of strength that you gain from week to week may come from two totally different places. It may come from increasing the amount of force that your agonist muscles can produce and it may come from the reduction in antagonist muscle force that is occurring naturally as you become more skilled at performing that unstable movement. Conversely, if you're using a very stable setup, usually involving a machine, then you know that the strength gains that you're achieving are primarily or almost entirely due to the increases in the, in the agonist muscle force that you're achieving. 